prime men of the famous 6th Airborne Division after being decorated by the King. 6th Airborne headed the D-Day landings, fought in the Ardennes bound, parachuted slap into the German Rhine defences and was still leading our advance when Germany surrendered. They were well named the Red Devils. The Queen and the two princesses visited the Heritage Craft Schools for crippled children at Chile. Gifts made by the children were presented to the royal visitors. There are some 350 children at Chaley, where they're prepared for the day they will earn their own living and taught to fend for themselves in spite of their physical disabilities. <laughs> Young Morris Ockleshaw received an early introduction to Princess Elizabeth. Britain's great Atlantic liners are being used as the world's biggest troop ships to transport American servicemen back home. Here, the Queen Elizabeth heads out to sea from Greenock, en route for New York. On a similar mission, the Queen Mary sails towards New York's familiar skyline. The two giant liners, with the Aquitania making up a threesome, ship 50,000 men a month back to America. From the blimp above the ship, the camera records a typical deck scene. 14,000 men made this one trip. America's greetings to her returning soldiers is typified by the welcome given to General Eisenhower. His wife, proudest woman in America that day, greets him at the airport. The American capital had the honor of being the first United States city to greet the victory commander. London gave a lead to Washington in what a civic welcome should be like. Washington hands on the example to other American cities. A typical Eisenhower gesture. The general slows his car to greet veterans wounded in campaigns in Europe. A field day for New York's motorcycle patrol. It's Eisenhower Day. Deliriously happy crowds and the inevitable snowstorm of ticker tape are there to tell him so. Given the freedom of London, fated in Paris, and now Washington and New York, America goes wild over a farmer's son from Kansas, General Ike. 